Welcome to Goldfish on Games and Budget Game Reviews. Today's subject of a cheap review is Pax Max Classics. That's right, it's a CD-ROM full of Pac-Man clones. Six of them, if the back of this box is to be believed. And if we look inside, we find, well, it's just a single CD and no manual. So will these be any good? Can I drag this out for an entire episode? Let's find out, shall we? On booting it up, we find out this is good software for good people. And I feel by the end of this, we might have to question whether or not this was good software, or we were good people. And from this menu, we can install the six different games, which include 3D Man, Crazy Maze, J-Man, Joe Pack, Pack World, and Zap Man. So let's start with 3D Man which pretty much just dumped you straight into the action. As you can see, it is a 3D version of Pac-Man, or at least an isometric looking view. And just like that classic game, all you gotta do is go around eating the dots. There are the power pellets, which are purple this time, which does allow you to eat the baddies, of which there's a surprisingly large number of them in this map. The game plays pretty well, but it does feel a little slow. Now this is running on a 200 MHz Pentium 1, so that should be more than enough power for a game of Pac-Man. There's no real music to speak of, and the sound effects are pretty basic. And to be honest, I think they've just been borrowed from other games as I swear I heard a few sound effects that could have come from worms. Outside of just filling the level full of bad guys, this game does have its own ideas, including the teleporters, that will transport you from one pad to the other if you're moving on the same axis as a pad. And it's not just you, it's also those baddies, so you do have to be careful about where they're going to pop up. And I have to mention, this also comes with a level editor, and you know how I like a good level editor. And this really shows that... The game itself is just 2D, it's just being drawn on an angle. Next up we have Crazy Maze, which I just want to point one thing out. This was made in 97, please keep that in mind as we start up a new game. That's right, the only bit of music in this game is when you collect a power pellet. And why they picked this, I have no idea. It's so bad. This whole thing has this feel of a Windows 3.1 game. But as we saw, it was made in 97. The wall tiles change as you go past them. And Pac-Man has bright red eyes. At least they got the death animation right, but... And it does play okay. The controls are a bit fiddly, as you can see. And it has multiple mazes. But oh, I, I couldn't recommend this to anyone, really. Next would have been J-Man. But for some reason, it keeps trying to find Internet Explorer. And I don't have that installed on this Windows 95 machine. So we will come back to that in a little bit. So let's try out Pack World. And this is me actually playing it. This is how slow this game is. And there's no options to make it faster. So what I'm going to have to do is shut this machine down and go over to my Windows 98 computer, which is a 1 GHz Pentium 3. Which, as we can see, is significantly faster. I'm not sure if I'd say the game is that much better because of it, but it is a lot faster to play. And this really shouldn't have required this much CPU and GPU power to play. Now you might have noticed this actually does have its own little twist. And that's the key. 
which as far as I was able to work out, will only appear after you've eaten at least one ghost. And you need to actually get the key so you can open up the door and get the last few pellets. It comes with a number of different mazes and even has those tunnels on the side of the screen. And while the collision detection with the pellets seems to require you to be right on it, that's not the case with the ghosts. Being just close enough is enough for them to kill you. When running at the full speed, it's not a bad Pac-Man clone, but it's not a particularly good one either. And so let's go back to J-Man, which obviously got its name because it's Java Applet Man. I'm not entirely sure what the ghosts are meant to be. I swear they look like military helmet or something. But let's just move on from that. And talk about the sound effects, which sound as if they were recorded from a Pac-Man machine in an arcade. The game did boast about its fiendish AI, and to its credit, the ghosts do seem to chase you if you get close to them, which actually works quite well with these large levels. But outside of that, I don't really have much else to say. It's Pac-Man that you can play in your browser. Next up is Joe Pack, and look at this, a proper menu. And when I first started playing this, I actually thought I was that green thing in the bottom left. No, that's a baddie. I'm the yellow thing, and our goal is to collect those eggs. Which, as we can see, there's not a lot of them, but they are positioned in places where it's going to take you a bit of time to get to at least on the default speed. And it turns out you're not entirely helpless if you hit the spacebar, you drop a diamond, which those baddies can't cross. And it turns out they're more important than you might expect, because you only have one life. That's it. You die, it's game over. And it's not all over once you've collected all the eggs. No, you have to make it to your blue-eyed friend in the corner there. And after a bit of music, we're on to the next level, which will introduce us to its next feature. Teleporters. Which, as far as I'm aware, will actually transport you to a random teleporter. I don't think there's any way to direct where you're going to go. It was also on this level that I learnt that the number of eggs isn't fixed, as those two creatures, well, they're a mating pair, and will do if they happen to run into each other. I think this is where those diamonds come into play. I think you're meant to use them to block them from ever being there to meet each other. Because if you let the level drag on too long, the AI tends to get in this weird situation where they'll just follow each other, and now you've got a lot more eggs to deal with. So this was definitely one of the more interesting takes on Pac-Man. And for our last game, we have Zap-Man, which has a proper menu, multiplayer, it even has options. This looks like the most proper game we've seen so far. Will this finally be that good software for good people? Well, it certainly wasn't good music for good people. When I was in the options, I noticed that there was an entry for blood. And I was like, why would there be blood in a Pac-Man game? Well, it turns out there's guns in a Pac-Man game. Both you and the ghosts can shoot guns. And there's power-ups that you can pick up that will give you a shotgun, bouncing bullets, all sorts. This is absolutely insane. You even have health on top of your lives. But as you might imagine, the basics are still the same. You have to collect all the pellets. Or at least whatever those 
blue and yellow things are. All while avoiding firepower, explosions, and anything else this game wants to throw at you. You also get secondary items, like the boots that make you go faster, or bombs that you can pick up. Now it took me a while to realise it, but you can actually place those and make them explode as well. This is all sorts of zany and weird, but surprisingly a lot of fun to actually play. And probably I think this should be where we leave it. So until next time, I've been the Goldfish, that has been six different flavours of Pac-Man, or the Pax Max classics if you will, and this has been Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching this budget game review, I do hope you enjoyed it. And if you've got memories of this game, good or bad, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. And if you really enjoyed the video, then there's buttons below that you know what to do with. Or if you're not sure yet, then there's two other videos on screen that you can check out right now.